and we're gonna go to parts in our Starboard system namespace and here are all our different parts. Now these parts, these vulnerability report parts, they just, they are one-time parts, they are jobs, okay? They are basically Kubernetes jobs that run one time. As you can see, they are poof gone now. Now last thing I want to talk about is would I keep using flags? And I defined four key measurements here. <laughs> First one is the community, then design, ease of installation and documentation. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Just what I would say, like it's, it's just there, it just works. Like as simple as that, which is, I know it's like such a low bar, it just works, but it's amazing when tools just work, so. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, for those who are new here, my name is Anais, and usually I talk about Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now, in this video, it might come as a betrayal to everybody who's so fond of Argo CD. And I thought I'm going to be forever <laughs> using Argo CD as my choice for GitOps and um, continuous delivery. Now, in this video, I want to introduce you to Flex. Now, up to now, for the past one and a half years, I've kind of avoided using Flux for several reasons. Now, the first one is that when I tried Flux once, right at the beginning when I got started with GitOps, I was completely confused. I had no idea what was happening, I had no idea what I was doing, I had no idea how to use it. Now, <laughs> that experience was such a deterrent for me to try out Flux any further. So it just stuck with Argo CD. Also, there were some other factors, such as the company at the time that I was working at was integrating heavily with Argo CD. And Argo CD has this really fancy UI, so you can click buttons instead of nice commands <laughs> in your terminal. However, that is not the GitOps way. Now, if you're completely new to GitOps, let's quickly revise what is GitOps actually? Why do we use this? When do we use it? And how do we use it? Now, Let's assume this is our Git repository, okay? Git repo. And we have here our Kubernetes cluster. And we want to get the code from our Git repository deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. Now in our Git repository, we have the code itself but we also have our Kubernetes manifests, for example. Those could be Helm charts, it should be, could be customized files, it could be anything else. And we want to get this manifest deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. Now in our Kubernetes cluster, we have several namespaces. Let's just draw them. And several different tools, several different cloud native tools installed. Now what we can do and what you usually do at the beginning when you get started with Kubernetes is that you just do kubectl and apply, right? Apply, and then you specify the file or the resource that you want to apply. And this is called the imperative way to deploy our Kubernetes resources to our Kubernetes cluster. So we basically tell Kubernetes through the kubectl CLI to take our Kubernetes manifests and apply them to our Kubernetes cluster. Now, the thing is, if anything changes within our Kubernetes manifests, our cluster won't know about it and we will have to do kubectl apply. Let's assume you're working within a team, right? You have several people who all do changes, several different teams maybe even, and they all do changes to your Git repository on different branches or even to the Kubernetes manifests. Now they then want to go ahead and maybe merge things, right? So one team is maybe deploying one change and then they want to do a kubectl apply. So they go ahead and do that. And then the other team wants to do the exact same thing, right? With their resources. And in the end, nobody really knows what's actually running within our Kubernetes cluster. Nobody knows who deployed what, who deployed what what is deployed when did it get deployed or anything in between so you don't have any answers to these questions or they are really annoyingly difficult to find out now the problem is at 3 a.m <laughs> you want to know 
what had happened. If either <laughs> one of the features that got deployed at 3 p.m. broke, or if the Team Australia deployed something while you were sleeping and that broke things in your Kubernetes cluster, right? You want to know what's happening so you can fix it as quickly as possible. You want to have all the insights possible into your Kubernetes cluster. And it's only possible if you have the answers to those questions. Now, what do you do with GitOps tools such as Argo CD, such as Flux? You deploy an agent into your Kubernetes cluster. Now, with Flux, I think they are called controllers. So you have different controllers running inside of your Kubernetes cluster that all help you to manage the resources in your Kubernetes cluster. And what you do instead of this, instead of let's cross this out, so you don't do this, but what the workflow looks like instead is that people make changes to the Git repository, okay? They make changes just to the code. Then you have a CICD pipeline that is running within your repository. So for example, GitHub Actions, right? It's running and let's say things get deployed to the main branch, they pass all the checks, everything's good. They then get pushed to the main branch and then they update the Kubernetes manifest, for example, to version 2.0 of your container image or whatever it is, right? So you have that. And um, once a change occurs there, then the agent living inside of your cluster is responsible to pull that change. Let's do this. Pull this change. Wait, let's move this further up that we don't do want this. We don't want this anymore. So the agent pulls this change into your Kubernetes cluster and deploys it in, for example, the app namespace. And how does the agent know about your Kubernetes manifests? Well, the administrator of your Kubernetes cluster is the only person who has access to your Kubernetes cluster, okay? And this person tells your Kubernetes cluster about these, where the Kubernetes manifests live, okay? This is the only person who is allowed to tell, to point your Kubernetes manifests to the agent, okay? And this is how the agent knows about those Kubernetes manifests. Only the cluster admin can do this. This way, anybody else, all of the engineers here, all of the engineering teams, don't need access to your Kubernetes cluster. They should not have access to make changes within your Kubernetes cluster. They could maybe have access to a specific namespaces to test new versions, new features or something. If you don't want to have a separate cluster for those, for the <laughs> staging or test environments. Um, but nobody else should have access to your Kubernetes cluster. And the agent is responsible to detail who deployed what. So who made the changes to the code, which is then reflected in the manifest and got deployed in your Kubernetes cluster. What is deployed? version 2.0, okay, it's clearly supposed to tell you what is deployed in your Kubernetes cluster and when did it get deployed. Now, there are two main tools that help us do this. The first one is Argo CD and the second one is Flux, okay. I'm not going to go into the politics of these. Uh, Flux is an incubating project. Maybe Argo CD is about to graduate. Maybe it's also an incubating project. I have to cross check that. <laughs> but ultimately, these are the two tools that you can use. Now, the thing is, Argo CD has a UI, and I showed that in several different videos, where it says Flux is CLI based. Now, the thing is, they both have different design choices. Okay, So with Argo CD, you have different options of telling your Kubernetes cluster about your resources. With Flux, it's really just that path. And I'm going to go into the details further and what I think about it towards the end of the video. So if you want to know my feedback, my insights, go to the end of the video. Okay? Now, in this video, we're going to look at Flux. Previous videos checked out Argo CD. So what is Flux? Flux is the GitOps family of projects. So you have basically the GitOps toolkit that's part of Flux. Now, I just got started with Flux. So I have this one tutorial and two tutorial in this video <laughs> that I'm going to show you. It's based on the documentation. So we're going to dive right in. I'm going to show you 
how you can set up Flux, install Flux in your Kubernetes cluster. You can use any Kubernetes cluster. It could be a, a MicroKates, Minikube, Docker desktop Kubernetes cluster. It could also be a professional managed Amazon AWS managed Kubernetes cluster. It could be any Kubernetes cluster, it doesn't matter, okay? We're gonna install Flux on the Kubernetes cluster. We are gonna tell it about a Helm chart, specifically our Starboard Helm chart. Now, what is Starboard? Now, what is Starboard? Starboard is within the Aqua Security Open Source Project. It's one of our open source projects. Starboard is specifically used to scan your Kubernetes cluster for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. So if Starboard is installed within your Kubernetes cluster, you can scan for vulnerabilities, configuration audits, uh, CIS benchmark reports, pen tests, all of this can be done through Starboard. It just basically lives inside of your Kubernetes cluster and whenever you install a new application, for example, it checks that, that deployment for vulnerabilities inside of your Kubernetes cluster. So it comes as a Kubernetes operator that we can install through a Helm chart, for example, there are installation options, and it comes through a CLI command so that you can use, for example, in CICD pipelines. Now, we're going to use the Helm chart and it's going to be managed through Flux. Then once we have the Helm chart installed, we want to deploy an application. Now we're going to deploy the application through Kubernetes manifests. We're going to tell uh, Flux about those Kubernetes manifests. I'm going to show you in both cases how you can install those resources, either through the Flux CLI command or how you can deploy them through Kubernetes manifests. So you can define everything declaratively within Kubernetes manifests. Now, lastly, we're going to set up uh, reporting um, to our Slack channel through Flux. It's pretty straightforward. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how you can also set up um, monitoring for your Flux resources through Prometheus and Grafana. So this is the entire tutorial where we, that we're going to cover in this video. Now, like always, if you prefer the written version of these tutorials, I have a blog post link below that guides you through everything that I'm detailing in this video, all the different commands with the output, everything that I'm covering in this tutorial. This is the written version that's linked below. Now I'm going to cover <laughs> everything here in this video. You can check out all the commands, everything that I'm doing right through the blog post, if that's your preferred way of consuming content. Also, please, 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 if you like these kind of videos and you want to make sure that other people see these videos too, and you want to signal me how much you like these videos and that I should make more of this kind of content, then make sure to give the video a like, thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with new videos on my channel and hit the bell notification icon so you know whenever I have a new live stream coming up or new videos. Now let's dive right into the tutorial. Now, as you can see, I was connected to my kind Tracy Kubernetes cluster, but I wanted to create a completely fresh Kubernetes cluster so you can follow along. Now, <laughs> I call this Flux CD, and now I'm connected to my kind Flux CD Kubernetes cluster. So if I say kubectl get notes, I can see my kind notes, hopefully. Here we go. Now, this is a completely empty Kubernetes cluster. There is all the default stuff installed, but nothing else. So we want to go ahead and we want to use Flux. Now, in this case, you can go ahead and you can install Flux, for example, through Homebrew. So you can say brew install Flux CD. Now I already have Flux installed. I already have access to Flux. This will become important throughout this tutorial. You can also then add Flux to your, um, to your profile path of your terminal. Now I'm not going to do that right now. Next, you want to go ahead to specify your GitHub token. Now, where can you find your GitHub token? I'm going to show you. So where can you find your access token, your personal access token to your account? You can go into settings and then tokens on your GitHub account and you can generate a new token. Now, this token is going to be for Flux. So we're going to put that as like that. And I think it needs access to the repository and then access to my user. What else are we going to give it access to? I think that's pretty much it. It doesn't need access to anything else. Not for now, at least. And now we're going to generate the token and this will display my token. However, then you go and you say export GitHub token and you paste your token right here, which I'm also not going to show you. Now, lastly, we will need our GitHub username. So you specify your GitHub username. This is my GitHub username. 
And then once we have everything defined, we can check whether our Kubernetes cluster is actually suitable for Flux. So we just run a few checks before we get started. So checking prerequisites, Kubernetes, version blah, blah, prerequisites checked. <laughs> awesome. So now we can use our Flux bootstrap command. So we have here our Kubernetes cluster and we have here our Git repository. And here in the CLI, we're going to run the flux bootstrap, flux bootstrap command. Now what it does, it creates a Git repository. And in that Git repository, there are the Kubernetes manifests that at the same time installed into a flux system namespace inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So it both creates this repository and the flux system namespace. And if any changes occur within a Git repository, it's going to again then deploy those changes to your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, that's ultimately what the flux bootstrap command does. Oh, here we go. So <laughs> we can go ahead and we can check out our Kubernetes cluster. And specifically, we're going to check out the namespace flux system. So as you could already see, there are a few controller parts being installed. So our notification controller, our source controller, our customized controller, our HAM controller. Now, when you hear customize, you might think about customize as in the tool customize, which is a bit confusing because at the beginning I thought that Flex is related or implementing or building with customize for some reason. But then I really couldn't find a direct connection between Flex and customize and how customize is shown within flux. So after all of this, <laughs> long story short, I think it's just using the name for this resource customize. Okay. So it's just a resource type customize and the resource type is basically, um, any specific resource it could be like a home chart resource. It could be a Git repository resource. I'm going to show you some of the resources in a second through the CLI that you have. Do you have the helm controller? as well. So these different controllers, that's what you have inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, lastly, I have here the repository that got generated through the bootstrap command. So as you can see, it just has this resource clusters, my cluster flux system um, resource. So basically in a flux system namespace with my cluster, that's where these resources got installed. That's what I think. Um, that's what I think happened. <laughs> now, uh, this is basically used to install Flux through Flux, which is an interesting thing. I think that's what's happening here. Um, <laughs> now, let's go ahead and tell Flux about our starboard uh, Helm chart. Now, how do I know about the starboard Helm chart? So, within starboard, we have here our operator. The operator can be installed through Helm. Now, Usually you would specify, first of all, the repository where you can find the home chart. Then you would update all of your repositories to have really the latest changes of all your home charts. And then you would say home install starboard operator, aqua operator in a namespace starboard system. Da, 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 da. Okay. This is the usual process of how you install a home chart. Now, what we're going to do instead is we're going to first add a source type to flex. So this is our source type, flux create source helm starboard operator based on this URL in namespace starboard system. Now we don't have the namespace starboard system yet. So let's create a kubectl create namespace starboard system. This is our namespace. And here we're going to install the flux source. We're going to create that. Okay. So it's of type helm repository. So as you can see, you're creating custom resources through flux. Okay. So we can look now for Helm repositories. Helm repositories. Isn't that how it's called? Helm repository. Let's do this again. Namespace. And then we're going to go to Starboard system. And we're going to look for Helm repositories. 
button here is our starboard operator. So as you can see, it's ready and it has the latest revision of starboard operator, which is amazing. So we have access to our starboard chart, um, starboard helm chart. Now we want to create through flex a helm release for our operator. Now this is how you do it. You say flex create helm release starboard operator chart starboard operator. And then the source is from the helm repository, the starboard operator. So we called the helm repository object that we created starboard operator. That's what we're referencing. That's the source that's used here. And the namespace starboard system. This is what we're doing. Okay, this is all we're doing. So we're waiting for this resource to be reconciled, meaning that basically flex takes the helm operator. Let's go ahead and draw this as well. So if here's our chart registry, and I hope you can see this. Let me just cross check that you can see it. Okay. This is our chart registry. Okay. Within our chart registry, we have our different helm charts. So this is the aqua chart registry that are all available. And within here, within the registry, we have our starboard chart. Now, we told Flux, please pull this and deploy it to our starboard system namespace. Starboard system namespace. That's ultimately what Flux does. Flux, not the bootstrap command, okay? This is ultimately what we told Flux to do. Um, now we told it to do it through the CLI and usually when we used Argo CD and we told it to do things through the CLI, it wouldn't automatically make updates unless we specifically tell it through the CLI to do it. Now Flex is a bit different and I'm going to show you that in a second and that it does make automatic updates. So now we have the release. So we're going to check our Kubernetes cluster again. And we're going to go to parts in our starboard system namespace. And here are all our different parts. Now these parts, these vulnerability report parts, they just, they are one time parts, they're jobs. Okay. They're basically Kubernetes jobs that run one time. As you can see, they're proof gone now. Okay. So what have they done? They have created vulnerability reports. Now we have to go to all of our resources. And now we can check for vulnerability reports because these vulnerability reports are in the Flux system namespace because they belong to Flux. So we've created vulnerability reports on Flux, basically on the Flux um, resources, on the Flux parts. These are the vulnerability reports that have been created. As you can see, here are the different vulnerabilities in Flux. And now in the in the blog post link below, I compared it to the vulnerabilities that Starboard found within Argo CD resources. Now, just TLDR, flex vulnerabilities are a bit lower. Um, <laughs> for security newbies, this is kind of one point of indication of like, okay, which resource should I use? But it's just, it, it gives you higher confidence in a tool, right? If there are lower vulnerabilities found in that tool. So these are the vulnerabilities that are found. If they are unknown vulnerabilities, it might be that those vulnerabilities that there might not be a fix available, right? Or that they just can't really be classified as like high, medium, low, critical. Um, yeah. So as you can see, the scanner was done through Trivi. Trivi is used to scan vulnerabilities. You can use it to scan vulnerabilities in container images, file systems, your um, infrastructure's code, Git repositories. So you can also use it for your Docker files, for your Terraform files, to scan for vulnerabilities. Now through uh, Starboard, Trivi is used to scan for vulnerabilities inside of your Kubernetes cluster to make it super easy for you to know how many vulnerabilities you have, right? So we have managed it through Flex, okay? We have installed Starboard through Flex, which is amazing. So now we want to go ahead and we want to also deploy an application. Now, the thing is that you can do the same thing that I just showed you, but also through Kubernetes YAML manifests. Okay. So 
we could deploy our application through this Kubernetes YAML manifest where we tell Flux about our Git repository. So we create a resource Git repository where we link the Git repository that we want to install. And then upon linking it, we create the customization resource. Okay, so this is kind of the source, the Git repository. And we want to exclude, we want only want to include the manifest files, only them and ignore everything else. And then we can create a customization resource that installs the manifests from the Git repository. And then it's it's basically installing it into the app namespace. So we can use this resource instead. Now here, for instance, I've created the resource where you can install the Helm chart, the Helm repository and the Helm release the way that I used Flux CLI to do that, right? I used the Flux CLI to do this but you can also use this Kubernetes resource. And now with the alerts and notification provider, we are gonna look at that in a second. So I want to go ahead and install the application YAML. So I'm gonna say um, kubectl create namespace app. That's the first thing. I could also specify the app namespace as part of my manifest, but I didn't do that. So <laughs> now we're gonna say, go ahead and say kubectl apply file, application YAML, and this created our Git repository resource and our customization resource. Okay, so we can go back to our uh, cluster and look at our cluster and check for our Git repositories. And as you can see, here's our React app. In addition to our Flux system, when we install Flux, we have also our React app. And then we have our customization resource, okay? Now the customization resource here has been deployed. So we should now see in our app namespace, we should see two parts running, okay? And these two parts have a container image running, right? They run a container image. <laughs> and we can see them in our vulnerability reports. We can see that the tag is 9.0.0. These are the vulnerabilities, they are seven high vulnerabilities and two unknown vulnerabilities within that container image. Now, what I want to do instead is I want to downgrade that image, right? So we're gonna go to our Git repository and we're gonna change that container image, okay? This is like, this update would be made, like mentioned up here would be made through your CICD pipeline, for example, you would make the change, or you would make the change within your Git repository to this manifest, for example, and then the agent or the controller in the case of Flux within your Kubernetes cluster, so controller, is responsible to make that change, okay? Here we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to our deployment and we're going to make the change to our container image and we're going to commit it, change container image. And now that this change happened, we have to wait until Flux sees that update, right? And is spinning up the new parts. So we're going to go back to parts and this might take a while because in our resource, we said that we want to check our resources every five minutes. So this might take up to five minutes before Flux is checking our resources again and is gonna see if the resources within our Git repository are actually the same as within our Kubernetes cluster. So for example, before we had within our Kubernetes cluster, we have the app 9.0.0. And here we said that we want to actually run the app 8.0.0, right? So what Flux is going to do, it's going to compare both of these. It's going to compare them. And I'm going to see, oh, the actual version ins inside of our Kubernetes cluster is not the desired version that's defined within Git. So Git is always the desired state, the state that we want. And our Git repository is always the actual state, okay? This is how GitOps works. So let's see. Okay, see, it's just terminating our pod 
here from our old version and spin up the two new parts of our new uh, of our new old of our other container image. So if I go now to vulnerability reports, vul vulnerability report. Okay, you kind of have to be in the right namespace. Um, vulnerability report. So as we can see, there's a new vulnerability report in addition to old vulnerability report. And the vulnerability report for tech 8.0.0, as you can see, it has a lot more vulnerabilities than what we had deployed before, which is not good. So we want to make go back to our updated version of 9.0.0. Now, as you can see, Starboard makes it super easy to compare different versions and then see how your vulnerabilities hopefully decrease over time as you modify your container images, right? Now we have both running, right? We have, it's nice. We have both <laughs> um, Starboard running as well as our um, application. So we lastly want to create an alert for Flux. So what we're going to do to create the alert is we have to create a secret. Right? We want to get alerts inside of our Slack um, channel about any updates that happen within our Kubernetes cluster. So you need the Slack API webhook. So you literally have to go to your Slack account, to the APIs, to the API section, and enable the webhooks and then create a URL. It's pretty straightforward, but you have to go to the api.slack section, not just Slack settings, now api.slack settings. And then you can find your uh, webhook. So I'm going to replace this with my webhook now to create a Kubernetes secret for this webhook. Next, we need our notification provider. So this is our notification provider. It uses the, the Flux API and it's for Slack. And we are specifying our secret that we just created. And we want to deploy that within our Kubernetes cluster, our notification provider. Now, once we have the notification provider, we then want to create an alert. And the alert basically tells us if anything changes in our Git repository, our customization resources, or our Helm release. Because these are the resources that we really care about with Starboard and our application that we just deployed, right? So we're going to deploy our alert.yaml file as well. Alert. And once we have that, once we have our alerts, let's just double check that we have everything within our Kubernetes cluster. Alert. We have our flux system and call web app. Uh, it's ready. Good. We can use it, I guess. <laughs> um, now we want to change our app back to what it was before where it was version 9.0.0, since that had fewer vulnerabilities. And once you make this change, we hopefully get notified in Slack that this change happened, right? So if somebody has access to my Git repository, makes a change that results in changes inside of my Kubernetes cluster, I should then be notified about it in Slack, right? So we're going to go to namespaces. We're going to go to our app namespace. As you can see, the new pods have been spun up. The old one is going to get terminated. And then we can go to all of our resources um, and we can go to our vulnerability reports and then here our vulnerability reports again. So <laughs> they are basically unchanged because they've already been scanned. Like this container image has already been scanned. So Trivi is not going to rescan it or Starboard is not going to rescan it with Trivi. Now let's check Slack, right? So as you can see, here's the Flux channel and there are lots of messages because I deployed it or tested it in one Kubernetes cluster and then I <laughs> deleted the Kubernetes cluster and Flux started to complain about it for some reason that it's basically the app can't reach it anymore. And here is our new revision deployment app react configured. So it will basically tell me if there are any changes that occurred, right? Within my resources that have been specified in the alert. Now, lastly, 
Flux is providing really nice guides on how you can set up, for example, the Prometheus, the Cube Prometheus stack through uh, Flux, the stack that we used, the Helm chart basically that we used in the previous videos to use Prometheus and Grafana. So you can set that up, you can set up the Grafana dashboard, and then you have this amazing Flux dashboard where you can monitor everything that's happening inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, this is a really like straightforward guide, so I'm just going to link it below, but also in the, in the blog post that's linked below. And you can also then filter for specific metrics and everything that's going on through Flex. Now, last thing I want to talk about is would I keep using Flex? And I defined four key measurements here. <laughs> First one is the community, then design, ease of installation and documentation. And I want to talk a little bit about that. So first of all, the community. I got stuck installing the Flex. So first of all, the community. I got stuck installing the starboard Helm chart through Flex because in the installation command through Helm, you specify the Helm registry differently to how I had to specify it through Flex. So that was a bit confusing. Then I posted on Twitter, on my Twitter, if anybody can help me. And somebody told me, hey, just comment in the Slack channel for Flex. So this, in the CNCF Slack channel, there's a specific channel called Flex where you can jump in and ask questions. So somebody told me, hey, just go there and ask your question. So I posted my issue there. I created an issue on the Flux GitHub repository, outlining everything that I had done, everything that wasn't working. So people had the information of what I was working on, why it didn't work, what I tried already, and so on. Like, it's really important that people have that information, right? So somebody was able to help me like within minutes just by posting that in the Slack channel, which was amazing. It's really amazing to be so supported within the community if you get stuck, right? Because getting stuck is really frustrating and then you might want to just don't want to keep using a tool if you get stuck, right? Now, <laughs> I'm going to outline why I got stuck in a second. Then the next part is the design. So from my experience, a lot of tools, what they do is they have this vision, right? This amazing vision of like, this is going to be our design. This is what we want to do. And uh, it's basically that they have a set of features and then you're supposed to use those features, right? And uh, while users use those features and while maintainers and the people creating the tool, the project managers and so on, build and use those features, they realize, oh, there are gaps within our design. There are things that are not working how we envisioned them to work or we forgot about things, things are not working, or maybe our design has been a bit off or, you know, anything along those lines. And what I then try to do is fill back the gaps. They try to fill the gaps of like, okay, this didn't work, let's patch it with this. Or like, okay, we tried this, it didn't work, or that's missing, let's try to fill this in, right? So you have those really incomplete tools or like tools that make design-wise not a lot of sense or that are just unclear over time of like, what is it trying to go for? Or like, what is the best use of it? Because some tools have like so many different use cases or ways of using it that you can easily get confused or that the tool basically has best practices. You know, when somebody tells you this is the best practice of using this tool, it's likely <laughs> that the tool itself is unclear of how its intended use is supposed to be, right? So there are already issues in that, right? I don't have to write a blog post about how something is the best use case if there's only one use case for it. Like if I know that Flex can only be used in this certain way and this is what it does, if I do this in this command, then that's what's gonna happen. And I don't have to write a blog post about this is the ideal use case for it, right? So Flex in its design, I have been amazed by it because I feel like that the people really thought about what they wanted to create thought about it and they started from from the pure minimum, let's say, and then built upon it, right? They said, okay, this is our design. This is what we envision. We're going to build this and then we can put additional features where it really makes sense on top or if additional features are wanted and needed, we can put them on top, but this is our core design. So I think there's very little ambiguity, ambiguity um, on how you can actually use Flux or what its intended use is. Now, so the community in design is amazing. Now, ease of installation, it took me a while. <laughs> it took me a while to get started uh, because the documentation offers several different ways of installing it, i.e. not even really separate different ways of installing it. The problem is really that you don't have a clear installation of like this command installs Flux and then use this command to install an application. 
And here's how you link to the documentation, right? There's no clear path from installing Flux to installing your resources. There's a getting started guide, but it kind of conflicts with the other guides. So it's a bit irritating of where you're supposed to get started and what commands you're supposed to use for what. That's why the ease of installation, mm, it feels like the documentation, to be honest, is written by an engineer. It feels like there are little details between installing it, like little steps that I had to think about that the documentation doesn't tell me. If I have to think about those different steps, you give me room to make errors. You give me room to screw up. Don't give me room to screw up, please, because I'm going to screw up and I'm going to get mad and I don't want to get mad. <laughs> so please like fill those little gaps, right? Like observe what I would recommend them is observe how people get started with Flux. What do they do? Where do they struggle with? What paths do they use? Like, I was jumping between so different different files within the documentation back and forth to figure out like what is the ideal path because it wasn't clear to me. That's like the main criticism I would give to Flux. Like once you figured it out, it's a breeze to use. It's very straightforward in using it. Um, that's just what I would say. Like it's, it's just there, it just works like as simple as that, which is, I know it's like such a low bar, it just works, but it's amazing when tools just work. So yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> those are really my two cents. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you used Flux and AgoCD before, what is your preferred tool? What tool do you prefer and why? Which tool do you want to see more tutorials on? Should I make more tutorials on AgoCD? Should I make more tutorials on Flux? I will probably <laughs> use Flux more in the future, so you might see more tutorials. Um, but also do let me know what type of tutorials you would like to see on Flux. I really hope this was useful. If it was, again, please do hit the like buttons. This tutorial takes me a long time to make. <laughs> also, please subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I hope you have a really amazing day and to see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye.